In this episode of MPTV, we visit Mike, the owner of Parky Smokehouse, just north of Indianapolis, Indiana, and we're going to talk about a couple things that he's found out in his first two years of owning a restaurant. One of them, did you know that you're basically a property manager? Also talking about people and the type of customer service and hospitality that he wants to get. But last but not least, we're going to talk about what you should outsource and who you should hire you to help do things in the restaurant that you don't excel at. Let's go inside. Hey, what's up? It's Matt. We're back with another episode of MPTV and now we are up in Indiana, north of Indianapolis at Parky's Smokehouse with Mike. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for coming. So the concept of MPTV mm -hmm. is pretty simple. I want to help tell restaurants, MP, Matt Plap, mm -hmm. but also MP make profit. How can restaurants, entrepreneurs, managers, owners make profit in this business? Because profit is elusive in the restaurant business. And you've got a unique story to me because two years ago you weren't running restaurants you were helping on other things so I guess tell us who you are a little background on you and let's dig into it sure yeah I was um, a local Indiana boy grew up in um, Bloomington Indiana went to Purdue right up the road here so traveled through Lebanon several times going back and forth to um, home and school and settled in the Bloomington area went back and got a master's degree at IU and MBA um, worked for several organizations, CFO over the years, then went on to do some interim CFO work um, as a consultancy, and then that got me involved with Upland Brewing, which uh, they were looking for some help to grow the business, um, how to manage the finances. Um, I helped them with that. Uh, we added a brewery, um, some restaurants, and just kind of fell in love with the concept of uh, beer and um, restaurants and um, so that's what led me here probably about four years after I left there um, decided it was time to buy a business um, so I took basically a year off um, from the consultancy and just, just kind of drilled in trying to buy so we started looking at different franchise opportunities had some friends that had some were involved in some uh, restaurant franchises so we kind of got comfortable with that opportunity uh, looking at those opportunities and looked at a couple multi-unit opportunities and almost pulled the trigger on one it was in the process of buying it for about six months until we pulled out at the end okay. which ended up being a really good decision for us but as we were looking at that this opportunity came up in Lebanon and Indiana I got um, Julie and Gary Parks were looking to sell the business and retire we were looking to get involved and um, gain some experience in the restaurant business for um, a, f a further business plan down the road which would involve beer and barbecue so we knew that we needed to get some more experience and just the operations of, of the restaurant business so that's what led us here we had a, uh, a nice deal with them and they still live in the area and um, it's been a wonderful wonderful thing ever since so well, that's cool I mean, it's, it's interesting because I've interviewed so many people for this podcast and you're the first person that's kind of taken that journey mm -hmm. as far as from the financial side mm -hmm. to seeing it. What what did you see when you were on the financial side of it that really intrigued you? I mean, was it the the day to day? Was it the people? What what really got your interest? Speak to? probably the people. Um, you know, there's a shortage of places that offer one good customer service, but two hospitality. Yeah, um, make it feel people feel comfortable when they come in and want to come back and. You know, obviously in this business, repeat business is everything. And if we can get people in here, we want to keep them coming back. So, um, you know, do we know their name when they come in? Do we know what they like to drink or eat? Um, and we've got several great people here as part of our team that, that have helped us be able to do that and kind of take the hospitality to another level. Because um, that, that was always real important to us. We go to a lot of places, even in Bloomington, where, you know, they don't, don't care if you're there or not. Yeah. You know, what do you want? Your how number. We, how quick can we turn your table and get you out of here? Um, and that wasn't the case at, at Upland when I was there. Um, they kind of had a piece of that and a wonderful culture there. So we wanted to bring some of that up here, just that hospitality, make people feel comfortable and want to keep coming back. So, yeah. you know, it's fun. And you had mentioned that when we talked, that you had seen the, the podcast I did with Isaac and mm -hmm. Better Blend. And that's something to me that stands out that, you know, when I walk in their place and they're unique, they're a sure. quick service. But it was like, it wasn't the 
three, four months in, it was like the third visit. That's great. Now, granted, I'm, I always say I'm easy to recognize. I wear the same thing pretty much every day. Sure, and, sure. Uh, and oddly enough, the only reason I chose Orange Dreamsicle was because it was orange, and I like the flavor of orange, that's and right. there we go. But that's important. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll never forget there was a, a Mexican restaurant in our, our part of town that went out of business a while back. Uh, but for five or six years, we went there really consistently, and the, the one waiter, Armando, barely spoke English. But when we walked in, he had the fried bottle caps, the jalapenos, deep fried jalapeno, which are amazing, <laughs> queso dip, and two Mountain Dews. And, like, he would see us walk in, and we would be wait a couple minutes, get seated by the hostess, and he would bring it over. And it, it cracked me up because I was like, yeah, that, that makes you mm -hmm. feel special. Sure. It makes you feel like, yeah, I'm not just a number. And you're mm -hmm. right, a lot of restaurants, you're just mm -hmm. a tick on the register. Mm -hmm. So what are some things you've done here that, uh, that have worked or helped you with that? Was it already in place when you, when you bought the brand? Some of it was in place, for sure. Um, we've got, like I said, alluded to this earlier, about several team members that have been here either since we opened or soon thereafter. The business, Parkies, has been here for a little over well, almost 14 years now. And we've been involved two and a half years of that. But the general manager was in place, Krista, um, several servers and folks in the kitchen, and some people we've moved into some, some manager positions. Um, so a lot of that was, was already there. Yeah. And, and, just, and just to continue to encourage that and um, foster that and make sure everybody knows how important that is. And um, we also like to promote, you know, we want to take care of each other first. If we take care of each other, and this isn't rocket science, this comes from Danny Myers. Um, yeah. But you know that that whole concept just rang home with me. If we can't take care of each other and be good team members, then you know how are we going to take care of the customers? So yeah, that, it starts there. So I've got Danny's book on my desk. Yeah, so. you too. <laughs> so uh, okay, break time. Restauranters, it's Matt. And if you're watching MPTV, you're obviously interested in improving your business. What if I told you you could finally take the hope and pray out of your marketing plan and spend money and see results? You see, most marketing starts with the same exact tactic. You gain the attention of somebody, but that's where the majority of it stops. What we do with the ROI engine is help you gain amazing attention, which drives gigantic engagement. That engagement leads to customers to tell us who they are, meaning they opt into your email, text, and birthday program, and then we drive them to buy something. We've got a lot of great programs that can help you and we'd love to have a conversation with you. If you're interested, it's easy. Check out roiexperts.net. You can schedule an appointment and we'll hop on a call with you. Worst case scenario, you learn how to market your restaurant like you've never heard of before. Back to the action. One thing, this is a little tip that I, I gave a client recently who was asking me, he said they struggle with that. That my team, his comment was, I don't think my team visit visits places that treat you like that, mm -hmm. that they haven't experienced it. When you haven't experienced it, it doesn't make as big of an sure. impact on it. So I told him, I said, hey, what I want you to do, go out, find. There's, there's many places in your area that do mm -hmm. an amazing job mm -hmm. at it. Find it, buy a couple $15 gift cards, three, four, I'm giving to each employee. Yep. That way they get to go there and eat and they're gonna see when they come back the second, third, fourth mm -hmm. time, that person says, hey, Matt, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And that, I think when something like that happens to you, mm -hmm. uh, you're a little more uh, inclined to mm -hmm. understand it and appreciate it. Yeah, we still we still have work to do, so we're not perfect. Yeah. But that's um, just to continue to encourage that. When guests come in for the first time, you know, we usually give them a little um, card to come back, yep. right? You know, and the manager makes a visit, and then second time we know we see that card come back in, so we follow up, give them another card. So we try to give them, you know, free appetizer or free um, dessert to keep them coming back, and the managers making table touches, but. I think we've put a lot of more emphasis on table touches than, than, than maybe they had in the past, and that's important because um, they've always done a wonderful job with yeah. customer service. Just the getting the food out on time, and you know it's hot and it's ready to go and it's good. Um, but just spending a little bit more time with with people, and making them feel at home, is, is important to us. And and we've seen that with our carryout business, our curbside contactless curbside carryout. That just the support we've got from the community has been great. Yeah. You know, showing up and being generous. Um, with with the staff, you know, and, and just continue to come and order food, but then you know, share and gratuity wise, you yep. know, and make sure this gets to the staff and, and which it has, and um, so that's been great. You mentioned table touches. I had, I think, the first episode of MPTV was a guy named Bob Jacoby. He's the general manager of Quaker Steak and Lube in Florence, Kentucky, and I've never seen somebody so consistently mm -hmm. hammered home that 
I'm amazed the number of restaurants I go to. There's a restaurant that I like uh, in my neighborhood. It's got great food. We never have bad service. But I've never had a manager. I've never had anybody walk by my table and acknowledge us or you know, sincerely mm-hmm. say, hey, how are your A, B, C, D? Mm-hmm. You're not, hey, how are you doing today? Right. Because we really honestly don't care how each other is doing. <laughs> I always tell people, ask a, a, a sure. sincere question. But uh, that's huge. And sure. Bob talked about that. He does it. I always crack up because my son, he'll have a conversation with my son before we, he has one with me, which mm-hmm. I like better. Mm-hmm. So sure. going back two years ago, uh, if you had to look back at something you learned over the last two years that you didn't anticipate, what would it be from because there's going to be people watching this that are right. getting into the restaurant sure. business or they're a GM open in their own place. Well, two things, um, and both we, we knew about, but just the scale. Yeah. You know, um, it's like when we were putting together capital projects from a, you know, accounting and financial standpoint, CFO um, world, you know, your operations people come to you and say, well, we think it's going to cost X. And it's always like, let's call it three or four, because, you know, what, what, all, what else is going to happen if yeah. you've got a 10 What's hidden, project? Yeah, say. what's hidden, what are the unintended consequences? Um, you know, what are some opportunity costs that people don't typically think about? But, you know, so it's normally, and it does, it normally runs two, three, four X what, when you, where you start. So we knew that lab, you know, labor is going to be a challenge. Um, and then we knew with, with the age of the business and the building that it was time, you know, to start making some capital investments. And, um, well, in which we have, and we knew that was going to come, but it just became from a maintenance side, you know, which is not my strong suit, <laughs> just, just more maintenance than I had, had thought about, um, which, you know, we've got a house too, so I guess I should have known that was coming. But so just, it's just constant, right? And, that's, and you've heard that, but you're yeah. like, eh, it can't be that bad. But, you know, it, it, it hits you every day. You, know, you make one investment, and another one pops, you know, another issue pops up. And they come in threes, you know, the old adage, and that's true. But then the labor piece, which was probably, um, it's been a big challenge as far as um, unemployment rate before um, the, the change, you know, the COVID issues. But we're pretty low around here, in the 3% range. So it's hard to find. You good know, people. We've got good people, but you, you know, always looking for more good people. But in order to compete, you know, the, the, wage, the wage rates really shifted on us from two and a half or three years ago when we were looking at financials till today. Yeah. So, you know, you talk about the MPPs, that's, that's been a been challenged is to go okay that's really it's kind of shifted the the business model a little bit um as you were saying you got a lot of factories and things like that around here that i would imagine somebody can work this job Mm -hmm. which takes customer service they got to be personable make a little less or they can go work a robotic Mm -hmm. arm at a factory down the street and make Mm -hmm. twice as much so there's there have been some challenges there but you know we also we've been you know blessed to have a lot of good people too so there's no so the folks that are here now have, have done an excellent job for us, and we think they'll continue to do that. But again, when you're starting to staff back up or ramp back up out of this, uh, you know, COVID times back to 100% capacity, it'll be probably become another challenge. You know, get people yeah. get people on board. We can't provide good service. You don't have good people, so I'd rather err on the side of you know we just won't seat a section than you know just fill it up and not be able to serve people. So it's interesting you bring that up, my son. Gosh, three or four months ago, we went to a restaurant mm-hmm. and it was half empty. And they're like, we got a 20 minute wait. Mm-hmm. And he's 16, he's a know-it-all. And he's looking around, and he's like, place is half empty. What's wrong right. with them? And I, I looked around and I said, well, I'm gonna guess they have a, a shortage of employees here. What does that matter? I'm like, well, because if they seat that, now that server who's got four tables now has eight. Mm-hmm. And would you rather wait longer and have a worse experience and have a negative review or would you rather supply what you know you can supply correctly. Right. And he, he, he didn't comprehend it. He's no. like, whatever, Dad, you're wrong. They should see us over there. <laughs> so it's, it's always good to identify this stuff. Restaurant owners, did you know Matt has free online marketing courses that teach you how to successfully market your restaurant? Email support at mattplapp.com to get access to the courses and a free social media content calendar. On the uh, the property managers, I think it's I always I find that intriguing when you mention that because it's like when like we're looking at buying a house and we've bought houses in the past mm-hmm. and that's always a tough part. Like our house we live in now was three years old when we bought it. Mm-hmm. There's not a whole lot we had to do. The house we're looking at buying is 30 years old. Right. And I'm thinking, okay, 
the roof age, the air conditioner, well, all that stuff is multiplied at the cost of here. What has been, have you made, did you, when you guys bought the business, if you're giving advice to somebody that's buying a business, nobody's gonna come out and say, hey, by the way, this is everything that's wrong with our building. What did you do kind of to, to look at that and what are some things you wish you would have done a little, a little differently? Well, we knew, I mean, again, you know that you've been around the block enough times that bought a lot of capital equipment and yeah. you know, understand useful lives on things that, and just walking through and you can look at equipment, coolers, whatever, grills, I mean, that stuff just has to be replaced. Um, so, you know, it, it's, you know, if it's if it's been open for 10 years, that's gonna be what's happening. You gotta make, get reinvest, reinvest, reinvest. So I would, like we did when we were talking to the owners was, hey, just tell us, you know, we know there's something lurking around the corner. You're, you're doing this because you want to go do something else. I get that, but you know, uh, you know, you want to put a new face or re-up a franchise like a McDonald's. Well, you're gonna have to, you have to redo everything, right? Yeah. Every 10 or 20 years. So I know that's the issue and there's a reinvestment. So just tell us what's going on. Um, and if you can have that open dialogue, that's helpful because you know it's coming, just let us know. That's not gonna really change our opinion of you know whether we're gonna buy it or not. We yeah. just wanna know how to prepare. And that's, unique situation I have the house I mentioned I'm, we're in the process of buying I know the person that owns it it's the first time I've ever bought a house right because you always do it with an agent right it's always this shell game of like what's wrong and you know I've known this guy for a while and when we looked at buying his house and we're still looking at it he's said everything hey I had this done to the pool mm -hmm. I had this done to the barn the air he's mm -hmm. been so open that it and he's like hey by the way you're gonna have to spend money on this this and this mm -hmm. next couple of years and so like you said it prepares yeah. you I would have spent more time with the inspector instead of just doing a, a routine inspection to get um, the bank, you know, whatever we had to do yeah. for, the, for the bank, basically, for the mortgage. But um, I would have spent more time with the, the inspector, although I think he did a really good job and I would use him again. I just don't think I drilled down enough yeah. um, to understand any of the issues or walked around enough. A um, little bit of overconfidence, you know, oh, yeah. this, how hard could it be, you know? <laughs> so so let's, let's shift gears to something that's i'm gonna guess your strongest point financial is that uh, i read a book about a year ago uh, i don't know if you've seen it profit first by uh mike mccowitz and it talks mm -hmm. about how a profit and loss sheet is the wrong way to run a company because what's the last thing on a profit and loss sheet profit mm -hmm. and his concept is you should build your business sure. okay. around profit and you should build your end of your mm -hmm. thing should be operating expenses okay i've got this much in sales i paid my taxes i paid myself the number one employee is your the ceo of the company because if you're not happy then it trickles down and then you you, you plan to profit and then mm -hmm. here's my operating expenses so from your standpoint from a financial standpoint what what have you seen now that you're in the restaurant or that you've also looked at restaurants and helped run them what's a big opportunity that you know the the restaurants can really focus on to become better operators from a financial standpoint? Uh, marketing, you know, really. I mean, that's what got us involved with with you guys, um, helping us out there, because, you know, marketing's not my, my strongest suit um, either. So, but wanting to learn, wanting to learn more and do a better job and seeing what, you know, good marketing can do for you. Um, so that's been, you gotta, you gotta spend a little bit of money to make it, right? Yeah. So, so really spending a little bit more time on the marketing piece. Social media. I'm not saying anything. No, 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 no rocket science here. Yeah. Um, you know, you got to have the good customer service skills, and people want to come back. But you know, if you're if you're not marketing to new people, then you know, eventually you're going to you're going to become stale. So. Well, and that's that's typically an expense, and I know this because that's the business. I mean, that's an expense that people try to take on themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I joked with a friend the other day. I said he has a place that makes ribs, and I said I do a pretty good job of ribs, but yours are a lot better than mine. That's why I come to your place more right. often. And you know, a lot of businesses have this tact of like, I've seen this in the financial, they, they do their own bookkeeping, they, mm -hmm. they're their own taxes, they, they don't have their own attorney, thank goodness, but they're <laughs> no. all their own marketing department. Right. And it's like, if you realize the knowledge level that somebody else that can do it, mm -hmm. that one, they're gonna focus on it, you focus on what you do a little better, but you're hiring somebody that's got a deeper knowledge of mm -hmm. something that's gonna help you. But if you can spend money and, and understand that it's bringing something back, that's a huge element. Mm -hmm. But everybody looks at marketing as an expense versus an investment. It's definitely an investment, for, Yeah, for sure. I would agree with that. Okay, so final question, and I never prepare people for this. Uh-oh. If there's one thing, one item that, you know, somebody calls you up tomorrow and says, hey, I saw, I saw you that you own a restaurant in town, 
I'm looking at opening a restaurant up. What would be one thing you would say, hey, here's something you should do to make sure that you, you, you have a good, successful, long-term career in the restaurant business? Spend a lot of time when you're interviewing people uh, doing a really good job of that. And if you're not good at it, find somebody or get some help for some people that can really find out what you want in the people that you want to hire and, and really drill down on that because it's all about the people at the end of the day. If you don't have the right staff um, or aren't going to have the same values that you have and the same work ethic and same goals, you know, pushing towards the same things you're pushing towards, then it's not going to be very successful. So spend more time, and if you're not the right person, have somebody. Yeah, you know, get some help. When we had our boat dealership, we had a dealership for 10 years, and we had a consultant come in about four years in, and he looked. It was unique. He looked at everybody that had ever been fired. And he said, he went and had a chart. Who hired these people? Mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody that had been fired was me and my dad hired them. And he's like, you know why this is? We're like, well, no, why? He's like, because you're hiring yourself. Mm -hmm. And within a month or two, yourself argues with you. Sure. And so you need to maybe not hire people anymore. And so we literally turned over the hiring duties. We were just the third layer mm -hmm. of what do we think? And then it went on. But that was a key part that we couldn't figure out why we kept having this certain type of turnover. Uh, and like you said, you know, it comes down to who you're hiring and how you're hiring and who's hiring them. And what position, right? I mean, a server's gonna have different skills than, right? Your, yep. your, your folks in the back, yep. back of the house. So it just, just depends on what you're hiring for. Um, but yeah, seek help because that causes a lot of heartache and pain for both the people you hire and you if they're not the right people and it's not a good fit, so. Yeah, well, cool. Well, that wraps up a, another episode of MPTV. I appreciate your time, appreciate Thank learning you. about your business. And if there's something I'll take away from that that I've been told, hire, hire slow, fire fast. Understand how to hire people better, but also have things in place that you can Tell the employee, it does you no good to be in a bad atmosphere. It does me no good yeah. to have you here. So uh, hire slow, fire fast. We're, we're out of here. We'll see you next episode.